teaches you not to mark your bodies or put tattoos on your bodies because it says the body belongs to God and many of the things that God said not to do he gives certain reasons don't do this it's an abomination for this or that but when it came to marking the body he simply said don't mark your body he said because I am the Lord the body belongs to God we are the temple of the Spirit of God. In other words, the building is not the church. Where God dwells, your body is. And not only does God desire sometimes to, to dwell in the human body, but devils do too. That's why we have people that are possessed with devils. And they seek to find a way to enter and become one with the spirit and take control. And so many people try to say that we're not into legalism uh, because churches have do's and don'ts. Well, everything has do's and don'ts. A saint was telling me about the courtroom they were in today. And the bailiff had certain ways he wanted to arrange the seating. And he said, put away your cell phones. If I hear your cell phone, from the take them. I'll give them back to you at the end of the session. And he said, he said, if you don't like it, you can pay a fine or go to jail over a cell phone. And sure enough, Four or five people cell phone beat this day and he took them. A young man came in with his pants down. The man said, pull your pants up, son. He pulled them up. When the judge came in, the bailiff said, all rise. And no matter how old you were, you stood up. Amen. There must be order. If there's no water, not even the not even the deadly as a person can survive. If there was no order, the animals would run wild. It wouldn't be such a thing as a dog as a man's best friend. If there was no type of order at all, we have enough time with roaches and ants as it is. But if there was no order, they would be everywhere. And there's more insects than it is people. Yes. If there was no order, the birds would attack us and attack each other. If there was no order, no flesh would be saved. Yes, Lord. Because there would be no right or wrong. Yes, Lord. I feel a virtue. Understand, yes. there would be no right or wrong. Yes, Lord. And this is, this is what caused the world to be destroyed in the beginning. 
The world was not even a thousand years old. And we know that because Adam lived to be somewhere around 930. Methuselah was the oldest man to live. He was 900 and maybe 60. A few years after that, the flood came. The question is, you might say, why did they live so long? Well, if I'm correct, scientifically, the human body was not made to deteriorate. That's why it heals itself. You see, when God created Adam and Eve, they, he gave them life. Not death. Yes, Lord. Not eternal life, but life. Yes, Lord. They were created to live. Yes, Lord. And if they had not sinned, they would be alive today. Amen. Not eternal life, but longevity. Yes, Lord. He said the soul that sinneth yes, Lord. shall die. Yes, Lord. You will only taste of death if you go against what I tell you. Yes, Lord. And they went against what he told them, so what happened? Yes, Lord. So they died. Not right away, but as the world became populated, God had to bring forth the human race. Man. And you see in time that as time went on, the life of men began to decrease. Uh -huh. Around Abraham's time, it was 127 years. By the time it got to David, it was 70 years with grace, 80. Man. And that's where it's been now. Even though life will begin to increase a little bit more coming to the end of this generation, entering into the thousand year reign, Amen. a child or sinner should die a hundred years old. Yes. That's why you have more elderly living more today than before. Amen. But not to the extent where it was back in the beginning. Amen. So you see then God created us to live. Yes. But the scripture says, talking about order, because of the imagination of man was evil, not just sometimes, Amen. but continuously. Amen. The imagination of man was evil every day. Amen. That when God looked down upon the face of the earth, he only saw one man that found grace in his sight Amen. and his family out of the whole world. Only eight people were spared. That was Noah and his family. So then what, is that, what does that tell us about man? That God created good. Man has a rebellious nature. Because then man sinned against God. And the good was no more. Sin entered into the world. Because they listened to God's adversary. Who was already kicked out. Be careful when you get instructions from folks that have already been kicked out. Amen. Don't take advice from people that have already messed it up and they're not Amen. trying to get it right. Amen. Because it could be the very advice they give you will put you in the same predicament they in. I feel the virtue. Yes, My God, if you know it ain't doing any good for you, why are you going to tell somebody else to do it? Right. And not only that, but men began to intermingle with fallen angels. God said that man's days will be 120 years. That's when the time was changed. The floods came. After that, that's what the life span. Like I said, Abraham lived 127. And God brought the flood. Amen. But because there was no more order, uh -huh. everybody did what they thought was right. And it ended up in total destruction. God made man and, and woman, male and female. The man was created in the image of God. Amen. The woman was created for the, uh, was, it's the man's glory. She was Amen. created for the man. Amen. And there was a difference. Yes, the man was created in the image of God. And the woman was created for the man. In the image of God, but by way of the man. Mm -hmm. So then there was need to be make a difference between male and female because one represented God. Amen. And so people today, they want to get upset with real holiness preachers. Holiness is a lifestyle. Holiness is the lifestyle and the attributes of God. 
you look at the book and say it's the Holy Bible, the Holy Bible. Why? Be ye holy because the Lord thy God is holy. And holiness means simply living right, treating people right, striving to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And it deals with the whole man. When you get up in the morning, you deal with the whole man. You wash, or you should wash. Amen. You brush your teeth, some. Mouthwash, maybe, right? Uh, you change the socks, possible. You iron your clothes. If you were like me coming up, never. But you did put them on, sometimes. And then you would what? Eat. Whatever. But to addressing the whole man. Yeah, eating, you're feeding, you're dressing, you're cleaning your feet, you're cleaning your hair, you're doing this. And in today's time, you're changing your complete identity. You're putting on fake eyes, the eyes in your face ain't yours, the hair is fake, your fingernails is fake. You came in the house, Judy, you leave out Judith. Completely different. Today your hair was black, tomorrow is red. But nevertheless, you deal with yourself. And if you're saved, you pray before you leave. Because you're dealing with the whole man. Well, God deals with the whole man. Not only the way you are within, but the way you are without represents something. And we understood that it was God who invented clothes. He made clothes for the man. He made clothes for the woman. We saw in Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5, where God said, a man should not wear anything pertaining to a woman, nor a woman wearing any clothes pertaining to a man. We understand he was speaking on cross-dressing. Not only that, but in the worship of different demons. I, I believe it was... The goddess Mars, when the women would go to worship the god Mars, they would put on masculine clothing. And when the men would go into the temples, the prostituting temples of Venus and, and the goddess of love, they put on feminine colors. It was a demonic thing. Amen. In the book of Revelations, the Bible talks about a demon that's going to torment man, and that demon is on his way. Going to torment men for five months. And these demons look like this. They had the face of a man but the hair of a woman like a superfly. God's against cross-dressing. Cross-looking. Why? Because the man is the glory of God. And brethren, the way you carry yourself is what you're saying God is. I feel the virtue. And so now because True Bible preachers teach people to dress and not only be holy and, and walk upright, but to look like you're holy. Well, somebody said, well, there's somebody that can look very hoarse, but they get a virgin. That's true. But there's somebody that can look very holy and they're a demon, a devil. That's true. But it does not take away from the fact that the way you dress speaks volumes. Amen. And it is God that created clothing and he made clothing for men, clothing for women. Why? To make a difference. Amen. Now somebody in here tell me today, now we really see why he did it. If we don't need God to make a difference, if we don't need to make a difference in male and female today, what do we need? Amen. When you can Grow up at 18 and you Tommy. And by the time you're 25, you're Tammy. Amen. Because they have completely changed Amen. their identity. If you've been born a man and you have changed your identity, you're still a man. Amen. You're going to be judged as a man. Amen. If you were born a woman and you changed your identity to become a man, you're still a woman. Amen. You know, someone heard one of the so-called well-known preachers, when a man came, two stories, came to the altar and kept saying, God, 
make me a woman, make me a woman. She heard the preacher say, the church is not equipped for things like this. Oh, yes, we are. Uh -huh. If you're born a man, you are a man. Amen. If you're confused, it's all right, but you need a healing. Oh, well, the church is equipped for it, you see what I'm saying? If you're born a woman, you are a woman. Now, at the same token, if you are a man, walk, talk, look like a man. Amen. Act like a man. If you are a woman, vice versa. And God teaches us this. He teaches us this. The Bible speaks of people that are holy and how they look and people that are worldly and how they look. In the book of Genesis, we read where Jacob, God told Jacob, Genesis 35, I think it was, God told Jacob to come and worship me. And Jacob told his wives, he had two wives who were brought up Serving idols. He told his two wives. Genesis chapter 35. He said. We're going to meet the God. That I met in the way. Which was the God of Abraham and Isaac. And he said this. Change. Your clothes. Put on clothes. That my God will respect. And then he said. And put away your idols, false gods. Did you know in Revelations, come to the end of the world, the Bible says the people will still be worshiping idols in this day and time. We still have idols in this day and time. That's why I tell y'all, don't wear the Nike brand. Because that swoosh is an idol. It represents the God is Nike. And the inventor said it does. And it says it does. Is a modern day idol representing a false god. Amen. And the Bible says that his wives changed their clothes and they took the earrings out of their ears. But he didn't mention the earrings. He said your idols. You see, the wearing of jewelry in the beginning was not for decoration. It was for religious purposes. The jewelry and the charms. And you down south, I've seen a lot of it down here. People wearing ankle braces for good luck and things like that. Jewelry was connected to idolatry. The worship of idols. You see, when God created man, man was flesh, but man was holy. But you see, somebody said, well, where did the serpent come from? See, the serpent, which was an angel in the, in the book of Ezekiel, was in the heavens, but he was an angel that was different from all the rest. He was surrounded with precious jewels. Ten, as a matter of fact. Ten is the number of, of, of law, the number of change, the number of testing. Ten is. Noah was the tenth righteous son from Adam that, took, uh, that came about a change. A new world came in. Moses brought forth the Ten Commandments. And that brought about the law. There were ten gods that God smashed out of Egypt. He destroyed ten gods of the Egyptians. And then he told Israel, you have tempted me ten times in the wilderness. That's the number of testing and trials. Ten is the number of balance. Five hands on each. Change of order. When Gideon was told, to serve God. He said, you go and pull down the idols that are in your father's house. He said he took, they said he took ten men with him. Amen. Which was to change the order of things. Mm -hmm. Mama Brian, when I was in Liberia, had the number of a big ten in Liberia, and I prophesied it. I said, the prophetess prophesied it the number ten in Liberia. I said, there's going to be a change of order for the first time in African history in this day and time. Liberia had a woman president. Amen. The whole thing was changed. You dream of the number 10. You either be tested or tried or something's going to be changed. Amen. Well, the devil had 10 types of jewels upon him, which indicated he was going to be tried and that he was going to try to change some things. But the Bible said as he walked, he got caught up in his brightness of his own beauty. And then he said, So he thought he looked so good. He said, I will exalt my throne 
above the most high. I'm going to sit where he sits because he got caught up in his own beauty and his own brightness. Now, when God created Adam and Eve in the garden, it was all type of precious stones, diamond, gold, sapphire, carbon dioxide, but he didn't put any of it on the body of a human. God didn't do it. 